What's up? I'm Inez Alea from ColoradedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create that old VHS video look in Adobe After Effects. So here's a preview. Hey, Left? Yeah. Over my dead... <laughs> okay. Alright, so that looks pretty cool. If you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support our YouTube channel, you can always buy the project files with the link in the description. Then you can just import your video, put it in that composition and you have all the effects applied to it instantly. For those that do want to know how this is created, let's fire up Adobe After Effects and get started. Alright, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and we'll be creating that very old VHS look on our video. So, I have here a video file recorded in Full HD, uh, it looks pretty great in resolution, um, but we'll change that in a second. If you want to know how to do the very old film look like years uh, 40 or 50s, um, I have another tutorial on that, I will put a link to that in the description, um, but right here we're going to take a look on how to create that uh, VHS look. So I have my footage right here, I'll drag that into a new composition, and uh, right now it's called footage, so we have that footage exactly the same, um, well, the composition is taking the exact same settings from our footage. Once we have done that, we'll click here to create another uh, composition, rename this to main comp, and here we want to change our resolution. So as you can see, I already have the settings right here. Um, basically, if you have 1920 by 1080, which, which is Full HD, you will see here 16 by 9 aspect ratio. We want to change that to 4 by 3, uh, which is a little bit older, like the older films uh, were yeah, showed on a, like, not such a wide screen. That's going to give it an older look, so if you click OK, right here you can see it. Um, it's like a, a little bit tighter together. And then we'll drag our footage into that composition like so. Press S on the keyboard to actually scale it right here like so. And now we have our footage in our frame. You can of course move it to the left or right. Um, yeah, just whatever you want. And there we have our footage, I'll trim it down to 5 seconds, I don't really need longer, it's basically just covering the overlay look. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is like, and that's actually the reason why I made a composition out of this, um, because now you can jump into this one and just replace this footage with another video file and everything that we did here is going to change with it. So. Uh, we have our footage file, we want to go to edit, duplicate, and uh, we want to rename this red. And then we're going to search right here for set channel in the effects and presets set channel right here. We'll drag that onto our red channel and you can see right here we have red, green and blue. We want to turn off the green, turn off the blue. Once you have done that we'll go to effects, blur and sharpen, Gaussian blur and apply that with 25%. Now we have a little bit of blur on our red channel. Then we want to duplicate our red channel and rename this to green. Now we want to turn off the reds and turn on the green. Now click back on it and duplicate it, rename it to blue. I'm actually renaming it with hitting the uh, return key while selecting uh, my layer. And then I'll turn off the green right here and make it blue. And there we go. And okay, we have all the colors. So these are the three colors that you need to actually combine white. Uh, so we'll change this mode here. And if you don't see mode, you can toggle right here. Now what we want to do is click on blue, hold shift and click on red, go to mode. And instead of using screen or add, we will use a lighten. That's going to keep the original kind of um, brightness of our screen. Because if we will do this on screen, you'll see it's going to become brighter. So that's not what we want. We'll change it to lighten. And there we have it. Okay, so that's already going to soften our image a little bit, but what we actually want to do is offset a few of these layers. So for the green, for example, we can click on the green and with the left arrow key, we can uh, just click on it a little bit and then you will see these kind of uh, lines appearing, these green lines and then for the red, for example, we can go to the right and now you'll see some reds as well and that's going to give you yeah, that older look. We can also lower our blur to maybe 12, it's maybe a little bit too much, 25. Well, it seems about right. And then of course you don't want to exaggerate with moving it apart. But now we have a little bit of chromatic aberration and that's what we had in these old videos. Okay, so next what we want to do is create a new adjustment layer and apply that on top of our all our layers. We'll rename this to video overlay and then we'll go to effect, 
blur and sharpen and apply a unsharp mask. Here we want to increase our amount to 100 and our radius to 25 and that's going to give it that kind of popping effect like so and it's already going to look like a little bit of an older video instantly in my opinion but it's still a little bit sharp so we need to go to effect blur and gaussian blur like so and give it some value like 5. Okay then we'll go for a wave warp so we can go to effect distort wave warp right here and we want to change our height to well actually first the wave type we want to change that to noise the wave height we can go for 3 15 and for the speed change that to 10 so we have a lot of animation and then of course the direction is currently going up as you can see right here we want to go it in horizontal direction so we want to change that to the top so just zero this out and that's going to uh, move them to the left and right as you can see right here it's very subtle but it's really adding up in that effect next we want to add some noise to it so go to effect noise and grain and apply some noise we can increase that to 25 for example or maybe 20 25 is a little bit too much but now you're getting a little bit of noise on your video and then we want to create a new solid layer so now we'll create a new solid layer and rename this to noise and click OK here we want to add a little bit of um, fractal noise which uh, is going to give these kind of stripes that are going to cross your, your video like some kind of glitches in your video so we'll go for effect noise and grain and add fractal noise to it and then we're going to increase our contrast by a lot so like 5000 and brightness minus 2000 and that's going to give us something like this. Actually with this you can already do these kind of spickle effects that you see on a lot of old videos so uh, that's also really cool but we need something different so we'll open up the transform and make sure that you uncheck uniform scaling. For the width uh, we'll go for something like 350 and for the height we'll go for 1. That's going to give us something like this. Of course you can increase your brightness just a little bit until you get to see a little bit more detail like so. I think this is getting a little bit better. And then we want to add a few expressions to animate this thing. So I'll click on evolution and write time times 1000. So we really want them to animate really quickly and you're going to see something like this. I'm actually going to um, mute my audio here. So this is already looking pretty good. We also want them to move to the right or to the left, whatever you want. Uh, to do that, we'll hold all and click on the offset turbulence right here. Click on the stopwatch. And now we'll write a simple expression, just uh, try to copy it. Open the brackets value, open the brackets zero, close the brackets plus time times, maybe, uh, well, times minus 20,000, for example, comma value, open the brackets one, close the brackets and close the brackets again. That's the entire expression. Uh, so just read it carefully. It's actually really simple. Um, I went over this in other tutorials if you want to know what it's actually doing. And uh, just go ahead and check my other tutorials. And actually the two should be a one. I'm not sure why I did that. But yeah, there we go. So now um, this is fixed. And now you can see they're, they're really flying to the left and we're really getting that glitch feel. So what we can do as well is click on that layer and go to our mask tool and actually just mask a portion of that frame. So now we get um, something like this and maybe we want a few of them right here, uh, like a thin bar right there. Now we can go to the blending mode and change that to a screen. Now we'll see some kind of white dots on our screen. So um, there we go. We can also add a little bit of uh, blur if you want to, if you think these are too, a little bit too sharp. Just apply a little bit of Gaussian blur. I don't really think that's necessary for this uh, part. Actually looks pretty great. Okay. Now we'll create a border. So right click new and create a new solid layer and make that black. That's going to be our border. And yeah, it's going to give it that rough edge feel. So I'll rename this to border and click OK. And then with the mask tool, we actually want to cut off just a well, like a fraction of the of the edges like so. And then we'll subtract this right here. Then we can go to roughen the edges. So effects and presets, search for roughen edges and apply this to our border effect. Now if we zoom in, you'll see some kind of rough edges right here. Uh, so that's what we need. Maybe a little bit more roughen the edges like so. And maybe feather them up a little bit. Okay, so now we have these kind of edges. We can click on the border again because you can see these, um, yeah, it's kind of leaking through it. So press S on the keyboard and click here. And with the 
up arrow, you can just scale it up a little bit like so. And there we have this. We can duplicate our border and then on the bottom border, we'll go to layer and set, uh, solid settings right here and change the color to something like blue. Uh, perfect blue, so we'll zero out the green and this 255. Click OK and OK. And now what we want to do is change the blending mode to an additive. Go to your selection tool, click on your layer and with the arrow to the right, just let some true like so, a little bit of this, uh, some blue that's coming through that's uh, yeah, just going to give you a little bit of extra feel. We're going to um, zero out our edge sharpness and you can play around with all these different settings. Maybe you want to change it up a little bit, scale it up a little bit like so. So you have a little bit of variation. Maybe you can click on that layer, press T on the keyboard and like lower it to 70 or something like that. Same goes for the noise. Maybe we'll press T on the keyboard for the noise and change it to 75 so it's not perfect white. And then we'll close this down. Next, what we want to do is right click new and add a new adjustment layer. And this is going to be our color grading. So the color grading is of course a very important step, but we want to do this below our border right here. And this is going to give it that look that we see in these older videos. So what's very important about this is if we go to color correction, uh, Lumetri, where is it? Right here, Lumetri color. Um, very important is these videos from back in the days were very contrasted. So maybe something like 50 or 100, very contrasty. For the highlights, we can bring them up like 50. For the shadows, we can leave it as it is. For the blacks, we actually want to decrease it to something like minus 25, uh, something like this. They had a lot of blacks, so minus 35, something like this. And for the saturation, it wasn't as saturated, so maybe something like 70 should be fine. Now we can go into the creative tab right here. And for the faded film, we want to change it to 25. And then we're going to get that faded look uh, which is typical for these kind of videos. So maybe something like 20, something in between, but there we go. So we have this, um, yeah, so this is exactly how we want it. Next, we need another adjustment layer to so create an adjustment layer. We can put it uh, above everything right here, rename it to displacement. And there we go. And now we click on our noise layer and duplicate that. Bring it on top right here and change the blending mode to normal. And we want to press M on the keyboard and delete the masks that we apply to it. Also press T on the keyboard and just set it back to 100%. Now for the brightness, I'm going to bring it up even more, something like so. And maybe go into the transform and increase the width a little bit like so. Okay, the height can be something like 2. And there we have something like this, looks pretty good. I'm also going to Hold Alt and click on stopwatch for the offset turbulence. So we reset this. It's not going to move to the right. It's just going to move like, um, well, the evolution right here. Okay, so this is looking pretty great. What I want to do is go to effects, color correction, tint, and change the black color to a 50% gray. So that's right here. 50% gray. Okay, click OK. And now uh, we'll close this down and actually click on the layer, go to layer, pre-compose this and make sure here that we move all the attributes in the new composition. Rename it to Fractal Noise Displacement. Click OK. And then we'll uncheck this because we don't need it right now and click on the displacement layer, go to Effect, Distort and apply a displacement map to it. Here we want to select our displacement map layer which is the fractal noise displacement that we just created. So select that one, and then zero out the vertical and zoom in a little bit and see what it's doing when we increase this one. Maybe something like 25 is okay. And now you're going to see some displacement in your video. We can also jump in back into that composition, click on our noise and maybe play a little bit more. So maybe we want to increase this a little bit. Maybe we want to go to the transform and increase the height just a touch like so and increase it a little bit more or actually decrease the contrast like so. Okay, so now we have something uh, which is looking pretty good. If we go back to the main comp, you'll see a lot more displacement going on right now, right here. And we can also apply maybe a um, blur to our fractal noise. So click on that layer, go to effects, blur and sharpen and add a Gaussian blur, something like 5% or maybe 10%. If we go back to the main comp, it's going to be a little bit softer, like so. Okay, so uh, let's do a preview of what we have so far. Now we need to do a few uh, simple steps to actually finish it off. 
Okay, it looks pretty cool. Um, the displacement could use a little bit more work, but just play around with the noise right here and you'll get something that looks pretty cool. For the noise that we created right here with the masks, I actually want to duplicate it once more, so add a duplicate or control D and then just press M on the keyboard and delete the masks. And also make it normal so we can actually see it. And we're going to increase our brightness again. Something like this. And then we'll pick the actual solid layer or we can press S on the keyboard and uncheck our um, aspect ratio right here. We want to uh, actually make it smaller like so, something like 10 or five. And now we want to drag this all the way to the bottom right here. So we have a bottom bar and we want to decrease our brightness until we actually see something that's pretty bright. Okay, so now we're starting to see something. If we zoom in here, you can actually see that we have this. Okay, so change it back to screen. And there we have um, a little bit more glitch on the bottom. Maybe we can uh, take a little bit back. Let's zero this out. Okay, and we can also go into the transform and maybe increase the height a little bit like so. Okay, so now we have this and we can move it a little bit more to the bottom like so. Okay, so this looks um, pretty cool. And now what we want to do is create a new text layer. And on the text layer, we want to apply numbers. So go to effects and presets and search for numbers and apply that to your empty text. We'll uh, give it a direction horizontal. For the font, I want to use VHS, uh, VCR, OSD, Mono, uh, which I found on dafont.com. So if you search for that and alignment left, click OK. And for the color, we want to make this white. Actually, I'm going to solo this layer for now. What we want to do is type, we want to have a time. And you can play around, we can go for a time like this, which is also pretty cool. Uh, we can actually start a little bit further away. You can increase this number, you're going to get something like this. And then you can go for like uh, your actual um, text tool and add a little bit, yeah, add another text and enter something like time. Again, same font then hit enter and maybe date. And so here we enter a date, maybe the 1st April 2017. Uh, well, actually, 1996. There we go. So now it's, this is making it legit. Okay, so change it to something like 30 and try to have the, the same kind of um, yeah height right here. Maybe a little bit bigger, something like 60 and make them closer together. Your selection tool, put it right here, something like right here go back to the other text layer and we want to pick the position and put it right here and increase the size until we have it fitting. So you can actually overlay it like so and just um, do it like this. We have to eyeball it a little bit, but there we go. We have our time code. And if we are going to um, play this back, we'll see that it's actually like doing something. Uh, so this is pretty cool. We can uncheck this and actually bring these two layers all the way to the bottom right here. Or we can actually go to edit and then we can press T on the keyboard and lower it to something like 75 or something like this. And that's going to make it not perfect white, maybe 50. Okay, 50 looks a little bit better. Okay, there we go. And uh, we can close these down and there we have our time code. Maybe this could be a little bit bigger so we can select them again and maybe make it a little bit bigger. So for the text, we'll make this like so and for this also there we go and again offset we have our time code great all right so this looks pretty cool let's do a preview and now we have that VHS video look so if we go back to the original original final so it does look older doesn't it all right so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did give it a like and also subscribe to the channel see you in the next one and goodbye